innovation at every turn. At UMB, our focus is built around people, service, products and technology. These are the key to our present success and our future triumphs. At UMB, we're poised to make a difference not only with our customers, but also in the banking industry. We invite you to share in our future. Our future starts now with you. It's Wednesday, the 2nd of September, 2020. Hello and welcome to Joe News at 6 with me, Benis Abubeidulansa. A thousand. 59 active cases, 93 of them new, and 276 deaths recorded. COVID is real. Coming up this morning, Minority in Parliament takes its opposition of the Japa deal to the Financial Conduct Authority and the London Stock Exchange as it alleges possible procurement infractions in the agreement. We think that a country Ghana has been shifted for this current valuation model that has been implemented by administration. Also, Food and Drugs Authority assures COVID-19 tests at the Kutuka International Airport is reliable despite concerns from experts. We'll bring you details. And in business, National Communications Authority to press ahead with new regulations aimed at checking MTN's market dominance, a move that will hit its prices, service offerings and profits. We have details on this in 15 minutes. Also, Dododio MP Nilante Van der Poy says he will seek the intervention of the Speaker of Parliament to ensure persons who allegedly beat him are brought to book. I'm also going to lodge a formal complaint with the Speaker of Parliament. I will because my privileges as a member of Parliament have been insulted and infringed upon. The news is live on Joy 99.7 FM and on Hits 103.9 FM affiliates across the country and online at myjoyonline.com. Thanks for your company. The details now. The minority says it's reporting the controversial Ijapa deal to the Financial Conduct Authority and the London Stock Exchange. The minority argues the prospectus that highlights the viability of the deal has been withheld from Parliament. Ranking member on the Finance Committee, KCL Arthur Forson, insists the country would be shortchanged should government be allowed to push through with the agreement. All we're going to do is not a petition. It is indeed a letter notifying the Financial Conduct Authority and the London Stock Exchange that we, the members of the minority, have a major reservation on this agreement and would literally be listing all the reservations that we've had, including the fact that we do not believe that this agreement has included the required due diligence. Well, it's imagined that government has already expended $2 million on the process so far. Member of the majority and MP for Second D, Andrew Japamesa, has been defending the payment of some $2 million to transactional advisors in the deal. Transactional advisors that have been engaged in, including lawyers, accountants, audit firms, have been paid $2 million. And this is justified from the taxpayers' money? Why is it not justified? We raise euro bonds. We go on ratios prior to the bonds being issued. It costs money. You heard the Andrew Ejapa Mesa. He is a member of the majority in parliament and MP for second D. Away from that, the Food and Drugs Authority has in a statement assured that COVID-19 tests it carries out at the Kutuka International Airport are reliable. Lead virologist at the Noguchi Memorial Institute, Dr. Kofi Boni, had earlier stated that about half of the antigen tests to be conducted at the airport may not be accurate. Let's if you are looking at these figures, that means about half of the people who will take antigen tests, the, the results may not be correct. In other words, you cannot tell whether the person is actually positive or not. Apart from that, we have something we call the false positive result that comes with these antigen tests. While the FDA has dismissed this analysis, says the claims are unscientific and inaccurate, my colleague Joseph Akable joins me with a copy of the statement from the FDA. Uh, the FDA states that the testing it carries out at the KIA is not a rapid diagnostic test, but rather a device which detects uh, nasal swabs. It goes on to say that um, it uses the fluorescence technology, and it's worth noting that other mature regulatory authorities like the Ghana FDA have approved this technology and similar products for use in detecting a SARS-CoV-2 virus. So it goes on to say that uh, this test is reliable and gives accurate results. Thank you, Joseph. Well, the Kotaka International Airport, which was opened yesterday, received five 
flights. Now, some passengers who went through the testing regime say they did not pay any money for the test. Details will be at 6.15 in the Joy Business Reports. Now, Dododudio MP Nilante Van der Poel says he will seek the intervention of Speaker of Parliament, Professor Aaron Michael Quay, to ensure persons who allegedly beat him are brought to book. The former sports minister is battling pains from his chest and left eye after he was allegedly assaulted by some 12 men, including persons he believes to be national security operatives. My colleague Joseph Akable has the rest of the story. All of a sudden, I saw these boys, no men about 12, coming into the police station. Chest. NDC MP Nilante Van der Poel recounting the attack on him. His car is still parked in front of the Jamestown police station with the two back ties deflated. This has left him in pain. And also in my eye. The Jamestown police says it is investigating the matter. But Mr. Van der Poel says you petition the Speaker of Parliament to seek his intervention. I'm also going to lodge a formal complaint with the Speaker of Parliament. I will because my privileges as a member of Parliament have been insulted and infringed upon. MP for the Dodo Neil and Van der Poel ending that report by Joseph Akable. The Ochihene or Sajafu Amoti of Raping is calling on the Inspector General of Police to order the immediate arrest and prosecution of perpetrators of the Domfasi bloody clashes, which left two military officers severely wounded. The chaos follows the invasion of a parcel of land by the Mpunyahene of Achim Apidra Bafo Kumankuma Sapong, who is claiming ownership. But in a strongly worded statement issued by the Ochihene, uh, Bafo Sapong Kumankuma is not the Mpunyahene of Achim Apidra, states Secretary of the Achim Ibiwakwa Traditional Council, Danny Oforiata, explains why they want the perpetrators picked up by the police. The unlawful conduct of Bafo Sapon Kumankum was not authorized by the Ochehini, nor the Achim Ibiwakwa Traditional Council. Indeed, Bafo Sapon Kumankuma does not wield any traditional authority within the traditional establishment of Achim Ibiwakwa. So we are calling on the IGP to thoroughly investigate the matter and arrest all the perpetrators, prosecute them. Daniel Furiata is State Secretary of the Achim Ibiwakwa Traditional Council. Built around water, but with no water to drink. That's the story of Izile, a small town in the western region. Hundreds of children spend hours fighting to fetch water every day. As part of Joy News' Save Water Project, Justice Bedo visited the community. Here's what he saw. The Izile Lagoon, in the middle of the Izile Township. It is this water resource that gives the livelihoods of many of the people here. A lot of them are fishermen and fishmongers. This town sprang up around this water body. It was smaller than it is today and we all lived by it. But there is an irony. This town sitting around this water source has no drinking water as we're getting into the dry season, we are living in fear. No one knows what will happen. It is raining now, but we do not have water. Ezile is just one of many towns in Ghana still battling with a struggle for water. Justice Beidu, Joy News. Ezile. Now, government has secured funding to extend water to some 580 communities in four regions. The project, dubbed Small Town Water, is expected to reach over 280,000 people. President Tekufadu, who announced this during a water commissioning project at Amedopa in the Volta region, says the works when done will bring portable water to inhabitants. My government will not relent in its efforts to increase access to portable water for all. To this end, funding has been secured for the commencement of work on the Rural Communities and Small Towns Water Supply Project, otherwise known as the Aqua Africa Project, Water Project. The project will construct 150 water point sources and 12 small town water systems to serve some 580 communities. President Okufado there. Now, Holly-
Tony Child School, former champions and Fantapum School in St. Thomas Aquinas Senior High School, are among second cycle institutions to participate in the preliminary stage of the main 2020 National Science and Maths Quiz competition. Now, it's scheduled uh, to take place from the 8th of September to 8th October. Many students who've mounted the NSMQ stage continue to excel in various fields. In an interview with Joy News at the launch of this year's competition, quiz mistress for 14 years, Dr. Elsie Effa Kaufman said 